Chapter 8 Michael wished he hadn't agreed to Thanksgiving. It was noisy. His family had invaded the beach house with good intentions and mountains of food, yet it felt hollow without Anne there. He knew they were trying to cheer him up. He just desperately wanted them to leave him alone. He sighed. He was going to do his best today. He was tired of the moping he had been doing for the past few weeks. He might not smile and be happy, but he would participate. They would appreciate that. He grabbed utensils to help set the table, but Paget and Elle shooed him out of the kitchen. They told him to join the guys watching television. He didn't want to watch the game. He had never watched football. He didn't know the rules, the teams, who was the favorite. Michael sighed again. He noticed that FedEx had abandoned her post at the kitchen, begging for scraps from the dinner preparation. Michael wandered over to the sliding door and saw FedEx barking and jumping in the sand. Silly dog, it was cold outside. The wind was biting at this time of year and FedEx had a short coat. Michael leaned to the left to get a better look at what the dog was barking at and took a choking breath as he saw Ethan walking on the mole. He felt like a brick had slammed into his chest. The mole was a line of rocks that helped to protect the marina from the wicked winter waves. Spray was bouncing up as the waves crashed into the rocks, making the mole slippery and dangerous. During calm weather, people fished off of it. In weather such as this, everyone avoided it, because a person could be swept away into the cold waters. It had happened in the past. People died that way. Michael wrenched open the sliding door, ran across the deck, and vaulted over the side of the railing. He had a moment of panic over the height while he was in mid-air, but then he hit the sand, rolling. His ankle hurt, yet he scrambled to his feet and ran as fast as he could through the sand, ignoring the pain, breath coming in gas from the cold air. He was wearing only long shorts and a tee, his feet completely bare. It had been hot in the house with the kitchen cooking enough food to feed a small army. Outside, he swore he could see his breath as he raced across the sand toward the mole, praying Ethan wouldn't fall, desperately hoping he reached the toddler in time. FedEx jumped beside him, running along, barking excitedly. Michael tried not to trip over the dog as he made the turn, and without breaking stride started up the straight rocky shelf toward the toddler who was being sprayed by the water. For a moment, Michael panicked when he lost sight of the boy as a wave crashed over the mole, but Ethan reappeared on the other side of the water as it dispersed over the rocks, unharmed and still toddling over the uneven surface. Making the last of the distance, gasping, lungs burning, Michael fell to his knees and wrapped his arms around the little boy. Ethan was soaked and chatted happily at Michael's ear and toddler nonsense. A wave came up and Michael had to steady himself under the force of it as the water crashed over both of them. If he hadn't gotten to Ethan, it was certain the boy would have been swept into the waters. Michael hugged his nephew, relieved, thanking God that he was safe. A shout sounded from behind him, and Michael turned to see Noah and Max coming up the mole. He walked back to meet them part way, holding Ethan. The boy seemed to think it was one big adventure, even though it was obvious that he was cold. Noah hurried up and took his son in his arms, grateful. He hugged him hard. We should get back to the beach. It's not safe here, Max said. The wind was whipping at them all and the cold spray of the water soaking their clothes. Michael looked around. He didn't see FedEx. The dog had been running, jumping, and barking right beside him the whole time, but now she was nowhere to be seen. It wasn't right. She barely ever left his side. Michael? He shook his head at Max's query, not even looking at him. The dog wasn't on the beach or the mole which could only mean that she'd been swept off when that wave had crashed over them. Panic curled in Michael's stomach. This was his dog. He walked further up the mole, scanning the water. Michael, what are you looking for? Noah shouted, nearly at the beach, holding on to Ethan. I think he's looking for the dog, Max shouted back. He scanned the area, looking for Michael's dog. It's just a dog. It'll come back, Noah yelled. It wasn't just a dog. It was FedEx the first pet he'd ever had. She was the only one who listened to him, even when what he said didn't make any sense, who understood what no one else did. She had been his lifeline, his reason for getting up in the morning after he didn't win Anne back. Michael swallowed thickly, worried about his dog. 
Suddenly, Michael saw FedEx struggling in the water. She was swimming, but Michael knew how cold and how big those waves were. He sprinted across the mole and dived out as far as he could. He was lucky only to hit his knee off a of rock during the dive. With the unpredictable waves, he could have been smashed back into the line of rocks that made up the mole. He broke water, gasping. It was stupid cold. Keeping up even strokes, Michael made it to the dog and grabbed her by the collar. For a moment, the swell brought him up, and he could see both the mole and the beach. He debated his options. The mole was closer, but the water could kill them if it was too violent against the rocks. With today's wind and waves, it was likely they would be injured or worse. The beach was further, but the chance of getting there in one piece far better. Tugging on FedEx, Michael headed for the sand and prayed that no rip currents brought them out to sea. He didn't want Max or Noah trying their luck with that rowboat they used to play in when they were kids, or worse, try to sail his boat in an attempt to rescue him and the dog. They were inexperienced amateurs at best when sailing would likely get hurt trying. It had been years since he had taken either of them out on the sailboat, and he knew that neither of them had sailed since. Michael doubled his efforts to try to get to shore, pulling FedEx with him. Both of them were shivering uncontrollably. It was freezing. He'd be surprised if there wasn't a light dusting of snow tonight. He tried to think toasty thoughts of turkey and the fireplace. He would even watch the dumb football game. Anything except this penetrating cold. His feet and hands were numb. His teeth were chattering. Still, he swam. It was easier with a sort of side stroke to hold on to FedEx and make some progress. An arm came around him from behind, and Michael jerked in surprise. Hey, big brother, thought you could use a little help. Lean back and kick your legs, just like you taught me. It was Max. He was using the same technique Michael had taught him years ago when he was a kid to rescue a distressed or drowning swimmer smaller than himself. Well, Michael reflected ruefully, Max probably had thirty pounds or more of muscle on him and was an inch taller. He kicked his feet and let Max steer them towards the shore. It took both of Michael's hands to keep FedEx's head above the water now. The dog was paddling half-heartedly, eyes nearly closed. Finally, they reached the point where they could put their feet down and walk through the waves, chest deep. Noah waded out and grabbed the other side of Michael, helping to support his shivering form up to the beach. El and Paget stood in the sand, each toting a twin. Michael looked at the dog in his arms. FedEx was shivering, but was she breathing? "'I vote we all go inside and try to warm up,' Max puffed. Ladies, why don't you find us some dry clothes and get towels ready? Paget nodded and quickly headed for the beach house. Elle remained, tears streaking down her face as she held Ethan, who had been wrapped in an adult hoodie. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Michael shook his head. He huffed at FedEx. His lungs felt like they were on fire, but he managed a word. Barking. What? she asked, not comprehending. He repeated hefting the dog and again said, Barking, Ethan. The dog was barking at Ethan? Max supplied. Michael nodded tiredly, barking. If you hadn't noticed the dog, would you have seen Ethan? Noah asked. He looked at the shaking dog in Michael's arms with a new respect. Michael shook his head no, his heart constricted at the thought. I'm sorry, Michael. I take back what I said about the dog. Noah swallowed thickly. Here, I'll carry her in and Max can pull you along. Last way, we'll all get inside quicker. Michael hesitated a moment, but let Noah take FedEx. The dog was getting so big, and after such a run and swim, he was ready to drop to the ground himself. He wasn't sure he had the strength to carry her much longer. Max pulled one of Michael's arms over his shoulder and wrapped his other arm around his waist. Come on, Michael, one foot in front of the other. We got this. Paget met them part way and wrapped a blanket around them. He wanted to ask how FedEx was. She slipped herself under his other arm and helped to tug him along. I laid out clothes in Michael's room for both of you. It's a good thing all of you are close enough in size that you can share from the same wardrobe. Noah and Max would be borrowing his clothes. He far preferred it when Anne borrowed them. He sighed. He really needed to stop sinking like this. A particularly hard shiver shuddered through him, and he was grateful when they entered the house. It was blessedly hot inside. Max and Paget led him to his room, making him sit on the bed. FedEx. Michael was surprised that the word had come out right. He tried again. FedEx. 
It's okay, Michael. We'll both get changed and we'll feel brand new in just a moment, Max assured him, disregarding the odd word that he had said. To Max, it was one of those words that was substituted for something Michael wanted to say, best ignored. I'm going to get some gauze and tape for his knee, Paget slipped away, and Michael realized his knee did sting. He looked down to see it was dripping blood down his leg. FedEx, Michael repeated and motioned toward the door. Max looked at him in incomprehension, and Michael felt a flash of frustration. How did one mime a dog without looking like a complete idiot? Michael, let's get changed into dry, warm clothes. Then we can work out whatever it is you're saying. Max pulled off his own shirt and grabbed a towel. Michael sighed and followed suit. Paget came into the room and knelt down in front of him. She had a couple of pads of gauze, tape, and scissors. She used a towel to remove some of the blood, and Michael winced. Sorry. How bad is it? Does he need stitches? Max asked as he leaned over to have a look. Michael wanted to remind them that he was right here listening to them. Just because he didn't talk much didn't mean that he wasn't fully cognizant of the situation. No, it's just scraped up pretty badly. Paget pressed the pads against his knee and set to securing them with the tape. Max handed Michael a dry sweatshirt. I think your clothes look better on me. Michael snorted. He pulled on the hoodie over the dry tee that he now donned. Finished with his knee, Paget gathered her supplies. That was a very brave thing you did today. Thank you, Michael. Michael shook his head and jerked a thumb to Max. Yes, I would have done what you did, but we both know you're the faster runner and better swimmer, even if you are an old man, Max said. We all saw that wave. I wouldn't have made it on time. He shrugged. FedEx. Barking. Max put a hand on his shoulder. Let's finish getting changed and then we'll check on the dog. Paget left them to it and within a few minutes, Max was directing Michael along the hall to the living room. Michael felt drained but needed to check on FedEx. He gave both Evan and Ethan a hug, received one from L, who was still wiping tears, and then sat down on the rug by FedEx. Noah was roughing up the boxer mix with a fluffy towel in front of the fireplace. FedEx rolled onto her back to get a belly rub, none the worse for the adventure. Spotting Michael, she wriggled over and licked his hand happily. Michael shook his head and petted the dog, the worry in his chest easing. "'I guess she's going to be fine,' Noah said. "'Does the mutt have a name?' That X, Michael repeated. He wondered if they would finally understand or just not get it. He pointed to the dog. That X. Max began laughing. Did you seriously name the dog Fed X? Michael gave a sheepish smile and nodded. It was about time they figured it out. That thing with the commercial, that was about the dog. Max sat and wiped his eyes, still chuckling. A Fed X commercial. Remember he kept pointing from the television to the dog? Why would you name a dog FedEx? Noah looked at him incredulously. Michael sighed. There was no way he was going to be able to explain it. Max slapped Noah on the back. Hey, it's all good. At least we now know the dog's name. FedEx gets a full turkey dinner today. No bones, L sniffed. Michael turned and had a look at the kitchen. Nothing smelled burnt. He wouldn't have been surprised if another pan had been destroyed while they were outside. With luck, the pans would be okay and Fenley wouldn't be angry. I wasn't sure if he would survive another tongue lashing from the little housekeeper. Elle and Paget continued to finish the meal. FedEx got up and started trailing the boys around. I just don't understand how he got out of the house, Noah said as he watched Ethan babble and chase a ball. All the doors and windows are shut with the cold outside, and he hasn't figured out how to open knobs yet. Michael used a chair to help himself stand. His knee was really smarting now, and the ankle was slightly swollen. Limping, he went to the back door and grimaced at the newly installed doggy door. He had a feeling that that was the escape hatch. Noah followed him. Well, I'll be. Perfect for dogs and toddlers. Michael motioned to an old sea chest that was full of books. He pointed to the door and raised an eyebrow. Max, help me move this, Noah called. Michael gave his arm a small shove and gestured as if to ask why. He went to the sea chest, ready to grab a handle, but Max nudged him good-naturedly out of the way. Step aside, old man. You've got a hurt leg. Go sit down and wait for dinner. You've done enough heroics today. Old man? Was this some sort of nickname from Max? Michael wasn't sure he liked it. He 
It wasn't that old. He watched Noah and Max set the chest in front of the doggy door, preventing any further escapes for the day. Max wrapped an arm around Michael's shoulders. Come on, the recliner's comfortable. I'll get you some ice for the knee. Michael was beginning to feel that they were coddling him just a little too much. After all, his head was completely healed. However, he was tired. He settled into the recliner, and a moment later, FedEx joined him, snuggling in at the side in her usual spot. Max came with a bag of ice wrapped in a towel and put it on Michael's knee. Michael sat up and put it on his ankle, then leaned down in the chair. "'Why didn't you say something?' asked Max. He sat on a nearby chair and took the ice away to examine the swollen ankle. Michael rolled his eyes, petting a happily panting FedEx. "'Well, excuse me, Mr. Attitude. What did that nurse call you, cranky pants?' Max poked at the ankle and Michael twitched. "'It's not broken.' Michael already knew that. He expected in a couple days the swelling would go down. Some day, when Max was injured, he planned on poking him back. Hard. The oh, swelling will probably go down in a couple of days. Max placed the ice back on it. Hmm, Michael agreed with only a little sarcasm. Max, why don't you leave your brother alone? Paget asked. Michael silently agreed and closed his eyes. I have six years of brotherly love to make up for, Max complained. I have to bother him. It's in the rules. It's true, Noah Deadpan. It's in the rules. Come here and carve this turkey, Elle said. Michael could hear the laughter in her voice. He was glad. It meant that she had gotten over the scare that Ethan had given them all. They gathered at the table and Michael stayed in his chair. It was comfortable. It was his favorite chair. His dog was here. Maybe Max was right and he was becoming an old man, he thought drowsily. What about Michael? Al asked. I'll bring him a plate, Paget said. They gathered round, putting the boys in high chairs and doling out the food. By the time Paget came to the recliner, plate in hand, Michael was asleep. FedEx lifted an eyelid to look at her, then snuggled back to sleep with her master. Soon the dog was snoring softly. Fen Lee stepped into the kitchen. Immediately, she knew that someone had been busy. She put away the groceries and saw leftovers of a Thanksgiving dinner in the fridge. This was why she had been given the weekend off. Hmm. Good thing she had come back early. She spied two high chairs. There was a toy on the couch, and Michael was sleeping with the dog in his usual chair, a throw blanket tossed over them both. FedEx watched her, but didn't leave her master's side. Fenley opened a cupboard. Her pans had been rearranged. They were all there and looked clean and okay, but Fenley knew someone had been cooking. She padded softly to the guest rooms and had a peek. Four adults and two sweet little babies. No Anne. Stifling a disappointed sigh, she went to the deck and pulled out her cell phone. A stream of Vietnamese later, and her nephew would bring the extra groceries she needed. She started in the kitchen banging a pan firmly onto the stove. Michael jerked, startled by the sudden noise. Perfect. She proceeded to start the coffee pot and get breakfast going for two, all the while keeping an eye on her boss without appearing to. He yawned, stretched, and got up to let the dog out. He waited for FedEx to come back and let her in. Within moments, he joined her in the kitchen, going straight for the fresh coffee. You in big trouble, Mr. Michael. He looked at her in surprise. Taking his coffee, sat down on a stool and raised an eyebrow, waiting for her to explain further. You pay me cook, clean, and run errand. Now you got four cook and two freeloaders in house, she pointed to the guest rooms. What you do that for? You fire me? Michael smiled and shook his head no. I need job. I pay bills. I support family. Three in college. No more cook without me, Fenley said firmly. Michael pointed to the pan on the stove. Yes, pan's okay this time. Next time, maybe not so lucky. She popped some bread into the toaster. You have bad habit, burn pan. He burns pans? Max yawned and headed directly for the coffee. Michael made a sound of protest and put up a finger indicating that it happened once. Ha! Twice. Once you, once Missy Ann burn eggs, Fenley accused. I sense a story behind this, Max said. Michael flushed a little at Max's inquiring look. He sipped his coffee, refusing to be drawn into this. No more cook. You banned from kitchen. 
Van Lee looked up at Max. Which brother you? Max grinned. Max, and you are? Van Lee. God made you too tall. Get crick and neck just looking at you. She pulled out the toast and proceeded to make a plate, which she placed in front of Michael. God made you too short, Max returned. He sat beside Michael at the breakfast bar. I like her. I want one. Michael rolled his eyes. One of Fenley was more than enough. Only one of me, that enough. Fenley put a second breakfast together and put it in front of Max. I hope you like egg like this. It's perfect. The doorbell rang and Fenley bustled over. She pulled her nephew in, grabbing bags from him while chatting away in her native tongue. In moments, the kitchen was stocked and more pans were placed on the stove. Breakfast for the remaining guests were started. The nephew left. He hadn't said a word the entire time. "'So how long have you been working here, Fenley?' Max asked. Ten year. First time I see you,' she accused. "'Who are all these people?' "'We're family. Expect to see more of us,' Max replied. "'You're a very good cook. Thank you.' "'You a charmer. You charm pants right off lady upstairs.' Max choked on his bacon, and Michael laughed heartily. Fenley put a plate on the floor, and FedEx began eating. "'In my country we kill dog and cook it.' "'She's kidding, right?' Max looked at Michael. Michael shrugged, smiling. He was pretty sure Fenley just liked shocking people. "'You married to lady upstairs?' Fenley asked. "'Engaged. We get married very soon.' "'Good.' Those other two with babies married? Yes, Max decided Fenley deserved to get interrogated in return. You married? Yes, thirty years. Now he boring old man. She poured orange juice in two glasses and placed it in front of them. He my boring old man. Kids? Five. Three in college, so you need to stop cook and let me do job. She waved a spatula at them as she complained. I need money to pay school. Max looked at the orange juice. I'm not really a fan of orange juice, thanks. Fenley stopped and stared at him. Full of vitamin? You drink! Max smiled, relying on charm. Thank you, Fenley, but I'll be fine without it. Ha! Vitamins you need. You get cold and die unless you drink vitamins or orange juice. Then they accuse me of murder because I not let you take no vitamin. She pushed the glass closer to Max. No die, drink. I no go jail. Michael calmly sipped the orange juice and looked at Max. I'd prefer drink, her voice whipped out like a miniature drill sergeant. Max drank. Michael laughed. Finley cackled. You silly boy, as if. Paget came to the kitchen gave Max a kiss. She looked at Finley, surprised. Hello. Lady found her pants back, Finley observed. What? Paget looked at Max, who put his hands up in surrender. Michael just grinned. Coffee? Tea? Tea would be lovely. Paget sat on Max's leg, wrapping an arm around his shoulders, and picked a piece of toast off his plate. Green, strawberry, black, peppermint? Fenley asked. Michael wondered if Fenley's nephew brought, brought all of that. He never had tea in the house before. Green, if you have it. If I have. I know offer if not in cupboard. Fenley put water on to boil. Max pushed his glass of orange juice at Paget, who absently drank some. Fenley set up more toast and dished up a plate of breakfast for Paget. Suddenly, she grabbed Paget's hand and chortled, That big rock! Personally, Michael thought it was a little conservative for some that he had seen. However, Paget and Max were on a bit of a budget. Paget blushed. This silly one give you ring? Fenley pointed at Max. Yes. Paget smiled at Max dreamily. Oh, she too in love. Joke's no work on her. Fenley waved a hand and turned the eggs. See, Mr. Michael? Turn food at no burn. Max grinned and turned to Michael. Care to share? Pardon? Paget asked. Apparently eggs got burned, Max goaded. Michael stood and put his plate and utensils in the sink. He drained his coffee and the cup joined the rest. With a pat on Fenley's head, he snapped his fingers and FedEx bounced beside him like she was on springs. Both left out the sliding door. Where is he going? Max asked. You brother and knew no nothing. They go jog. Happen every day. He jog even when three feet snow. Fenley shuddered, handing Paget her freshly brewed tea. Crazy. So tell us about the eggs, Max suggested. 
and burn egg. Too bad. I think if smoke alarm no go off, I no come, maybe there be more babies around here, she winks suggestively. Well, that would be about time. They've only been dancing around each other for the past twenty years. Max rolled his eyes. Paget frowned at him. Don't tease Michael about this. I think he really likes Anne, and Elf said Anne really likes him. We all want them to get together, Max replied. No, Paget knew where this was headed. What? Max asked, all innocence. No interfering, Paget warned Max, poking him in the chest with a finger. They need to figure it out for themselves. She make him happy. Fen Li made a coffee for herself. She leave and he sad. El made her way sleepily into the kitchen, Ethan in her arms. Well, she's dating George now. How can she date George? Max asked. Who is George? I thought she loved Michael. She does, El said quietly. But George is there. He's romantic. He says all the right things. He wants a home and a wife and children. Who says Michael doesn't want all those things? Max defended his brother. El put Ethan in the high chair and sat down. Well, he needs to tell Anne that before she ends up marrying George. They're engaged. When? Max demanded. She sent the picture text yesterday. I guess he asked her this weekend. Isn't that a bit fast? Patchett asked. She can't marry him. It will devastate Michael. Max pushed his plate away, not hungry anymore. Well, I'll just have to be here for him, El said quietly as she fed Ethan. Fenley heaved a heavy sigh. She knew Michael wasn't eating well. He'd lost some weight, too. He was depressed, pining for Missy Ann. She didn't know how he's going to be when Ann married someone else. Even though Michael was older than her, she actually viewed him as one of her children, taking care of him as she had for the past ten years. She didn't want to see him hurt. She glared at Max and pointed the spatula at him again. Come more often. Bug Mr. Michael. I promise I will, Max replied. Good. Fenley sniffed and doled out more food. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for chapter 9 of The Words Unspoken. Thank you for listening. Also, please subscribe to the channel to enjoy other audiobooks, helpful videos, and insights into writing. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.